Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and this week it's time to start tackling the door trims for the 680. So this week on Home Built, I'm going to start making some new door trims. These are the old ones, they're a bit uh, tired and uh, worn, and I really want something a bit nicer for this car. So um, anyway, before I get stuck into building these, let's uh, make a bit of space. Okay, so as you see, I just put the uh, 911 up on the hoist. I know a lot of you are concerned about the, um, the lack of uh, headroom I've got. Um, I found actually that because the Beetle is much taller than the 911, um, apparently in, um, I think it's Germany, the, the, the nickname for the 911 is actually the Flat Beetle, and it's much lower, uh, lower roof line, so I can actually get it higher up in the, um, uh, in the place. And I just have to bend my neck to get underneath it. I may um, raise this bay up at a later date to uh, get a bit more space, and I can just raise the roof in just that section and just lift it up a bit so I can get a little bit more height. I am limited by the rafters up here, like I, I can only get it up so high, but um, for the, the time being, this is still so much better than uh, having to work on the ground on jack stands. So uh, yeah, the fact that I have to just, just duck my head, I can, I'm just touching my head on the, the uh, under it now. That's a hell of a lot better than it was before. <laughs> so as I showed you, these are the original door trims. Now, I've made a couple of door trims up for the 911 and for the Beetle. Uh, they're really simple because they're just a flat piece of uh, masonite or MDF, and it's just cover it and off you go. These are not quite as simple because even though they are mostly a flat piece of MDF. This top strip is, uh, is, a, is a metal piece. Uh, that's pretty straightforward, it's not a problem. The, the wooden part is actually, um, it's actually sort of embossed. So it's not just a straight flat piece. There's actually like a, a lower lip that sits uh, a bit lower down and, and then it sort, of, it sort of comes in flat, then it angles up here and then it goes flat again across the, uh, the center of the door. So it's not a, quite as straightforward as, um, as the 911. So it's time to start pulling these apart and then I need to work out a plan of attack. Okay, so now I've completely stripped this down. I've taken the, uh, the vinyl all off the front. Um, here you can possibly see, I don't know how well the camera can pick it up, but you can sort of see that there's a ridge here and a ridge here to um, it, it sort of give it this shape of the door trim. So for now, to start with, I'm going to try and make up a bit of a, uh, a, bit of a template of the door trim. And I'm gonna do that with a piece of my masking paper, line it up, trace it out, and then I'll have a bit of an idea of the shape of the door trim, but also the shape of the uh, indentations. And I'll show you what I'm gonna do with that. All right, now I've traced up my, uh, my template just onto my piece of paper. It's not a great template because it moves and because it was over complex curves, um, it's not gonna be perfectly even. So I'm gonna transfer this over now onto a better, more rigid, um, surface to do my template. I often use cardboard. Cardboard can be really good, but finding the right sort of cardboard is difficult because cardboard boxes is that um, corrugated cardboard. It's, it's no good for templates. Um, I use sort of manila folders and stuff like that. They seem to work really well, but getting it any bigger, you can go to an art shop or something like that. It's, it's really expensive. It adds up really quickly if you're trying to get uh, the, the cardboard for an art shop and uh, I was watching another YouTube channel, The Fab Forums, and he came up with a fantastic idea, and that was going to the hardware store and getting, this stuff's called uh, RAM board. This is for putting down on the floor of um, your houses when you're renovating or whatever, so you don't damage the floors. And this is 
the perfect thickness of sort of cardboard you can use in a big roll that's, uh, I think this roll was about 50 bucks, but um, this will la last me ages and it's a much better option than uh, collecting up uh, manila folders or cereal boxes. Anyway, let's start transferring my template over, cut them out and see what they look like. Okay, so I've uh, done a little bit of uh, trimming and cutting. I've got my first, my template for my internal piece and my template for my external piece will be the old door trim itself. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna mark out the, um, the old door trim, mark out the internal one and cut out some pieces and then I'll run you through my sort of thinking on how I'm going to actually make these new door trims. So I'll run you through what I've just done. I, um, I cut this piece out, which is the outer edge of my door frame, door skin. Uh, and this panel here is the inner sort of raised section. Now, the raised section actually tapers at the bottom, it's pressed out and then it tapers up to the top where the, um, the inner and the outer are level. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this, this center section as a press and I'm going taking my slightly oversized cut piece of six mil MDF. I'm gonna lay it over the top of the lower section and then grabbing my center section, I'm gonna lay it over the top and try and press it in and get that, um, get that taper that I want and actually mold this lower section. Now, I don't have a steam press or anything like that so got a bit of an idea on how I'm going to try it is uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a, a spray bottle with some water and the heat gun and see if I can sort of soak the um, the board and heat it with the heat gun and sort of steam the uh, the, the, the piece into place with some weight on on the um, the board and see if that'll work I have no idea if it's going to work this is just the um, the mad scientist in me trying to work out how to make these things so uh, let's give it a go So I did these one at a time in that press and I left them overnight on both so they dried out properly. And now we have the profile. It's, it's not super pronounced, but it's there. It's almost as, uh, as much as what the factory ones were. So I'm happy with that for now. And hopefully when I bolt it in, it will sort of, it will be able to keep its shape. The next thing I need to do is, these are just blank door trims. What I need to do now is I need to go through and copy from the old door trim all of the holes, all of the mounts, so that I can actually put the door handle back in, put all the clips in, put the window winders in, all that sort of stuff needs to go back onto this car. So that's my thing now. The only thing is, is that I've got some different clips to try and fit it up. The old clips are these sort of little metal things. They're all old and rusty. And I just went down to Super Cheap and just got a pack of uh, plastic clips. So these are, um, you know, the more modern style ones. The only difference is, is that these metal clips sort of sat offset, so the holes in this don't line up perfectly with the holes that I need on the car. So what I need to do is I need to go through and get the holes in the exact right spot so that I can transfer them onto my new door skins and uh, then we can see if we can actually start putting together and actually see if they clip onto the door.
All right, gone through and I've triple checked that um, all of the holes all line up with the quick holes in the car. And I've also gone around and just uh, done a final trim on all of these edges and a final sand, just getting them so they just sit nicely and match in exactly with what I need. Now, the next thing I need to do is actually to fit these little clips. So I've drilled the holes where these clips need to sit, but to get them in, the way uh, they do at factory is there's a big hole next to a little hole and you sort of stick the base through and then clip it in. So what I'm gonna go do now is go through, make those extra holes next to these pieces, cut through to the, um, the, the new holes and make some clips fit. And there we have it. We have our uh, two finished door trims. All the clips are in the right spot. I double checked on the car, so they all uh, they all line up exactly where they need to. So now it is time to break out my new sewing machine and uh, see if I can start sewing something up for it. Okay, so now we're coming to the trimming part of doing these door trims. And I've decided that I want to do something you know, sort of along the line of this, is a diamond stitch pattern with the Alcantara in the center of the door trims. I've spent a bit of time doing a couple of different size shapes of uh, diamonds, trying to sort of measure it up, because basically what I took is I took my door trim, this is the one that I like, the other one I did it was a bit, the diamonds were a bit bigger, I didn't really like them. Um, so I sort of measured spaces down uh, the side and then uh, spaces along the bottom, made a grid and ruled between them, so it's quite time consuming. But what I have now is I have the spacing that I like, so I've chosen Basically, the tips of the diamonds, they're 90 mil wide and 50 mil high. That's the, the size that I like, that looks good for me. So now it's time to actually mark out the section that I want and um, start sewing this diamond pattern. And to do that, I need to cut out my piece of Alcantara, but I also need to cut out a, um, a foam backing for it because I want to put a backing behind the, um, the center section. Wow, I love this new sewing machine. Um, I basically upgraded from my old one. My old one still works fine, but it's, it's designed more for clothes. It's not really um, what you need for uh, sewing car interiors. And this one is much more uh, purpose built for that sort of thing. Um, and it's computer controlled and all the rest, but it's also five times the price. So, uh, Quite an expensive machine, uh, big investment, but I think they hold their value, so whenever I want to get rid of it, it should still be worth what it cost me, I hope. Um, but in any case, this looks amazing. So, um, so quick, once with a decent machine, it makes it so quick and easy to, um, to do this. So I've uh, got my foam on the back of my center panel, and that is ready to roll. one down and I am really happy that has come out great um, just exactly what I was after I still need to uh, tidy up on the back edge a little bit I folded it over and um, yeah there's a few little bits where I need to stick it down a bit better I might even run some staples around the edge but that can be dealt with later for the time being look at that that's awesome I'm happy all right 
next one. Let's do round two. And there we have it. We have two nicely quilted door trims for my Z. Now I still have to do the uh, top edges on both of them, but um, that's definitely all the time I have for today. That's gonna be the easy bit. So um, I think that means it's time for fun facts with Mrs. Jeff. Hey guys, in 1790, the Englishman Thomas Saint invented the first working sewing machine design. It is believed that he had a working model, but no evidence remains today. In 1874, William Newton Wilson found Saint's drawing and he built a working model which is now in the London Science Museum. A few others tried, but it wasn't until 1829 when a Frenchman, Barthélemy de Meunier, built a working machine, which was actually widely used. He signed a contract with a mining engineer who made the drawings and a patent was issued in 1830. He opened his first machine-based clothing company the same year to create uniforms for the French army, but his workers ended up by burning down the factory for fear of losing their livelihood to these new machines. Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Mail Time. Um, although this one is slightly different because I actually filmed this a couple of weeks ago and um, I lost it. So I no longer have the letter and um, I don't have the footage. Uh, but Mike and Carol sent me a, uh, uh, a lovely letter um, saying how much they like the place. And they actually have a really nice little uh, bed and breakfast in uh, Washington State in um, the United States. And uh, they sent me some stickers. This, uh, this is their uh, bed and breakfast, House Rawback Pension, um, which is an interesting name, by the way. Um, and uh, Mike's got a, uh, a quite a few similar cars to mine, a couple of old tired 911s that need some work, a uh, Datsun 280Z with the really ugly American impact bumpers. Um, geez, that, uh, those, <laughs> those crash standards really ruin the look of a lot of these cars. Um, a 914 and a, and a couple other bits and pieces. So uh, I apologize profusely, Mike, but um, uh, in any case, if any of you want to send me something, I promise I will try not to lose it. And uh, you can send it to Home Book by Jeff, PO Box 1520, Barrel, New South Wales, 2576, Australia. All right, that is it for another day. And I am really happy with how these came out. I'm, uh, I'm loving my new sewing machine. It makes such a difference. It's so much easier to use than the other one. And I love coming home from work and seeing Jeff on the sewing machine. There's something about it just makes you... The other oh, one still works, it's fine. It's just, um, this is uh, so many steps above. Um, if anybody wants my old sewing machine, it is for sale on Gumtree <laughs> at the moment, so uh, get on there. Um, or contact me directly. And we have a winner for our, the Yode watch competition, Wayne McDonald. Yes, um, Wayne, I believe they've contacted you directly, but uh, congratulations so, and uh, thanks for uh, Thanks, for, thanks for joining. All right, guys, well, um, that's it again. As always, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, the whole lot, merch, Homer by Jeff, you know the deal. <laughs> See you guys. See you next time. Bartholomew to Munier built a wall. <laughs> built a working model. Which... I want my craft to be perfect. I take pride. Hurts you me. don't want to be here all night. I'm an artist to these new machines. Obviously. Done. Yeah.